Welcome to Just a Minute. Thank you, thank you, hello. My name is Nicholas Parsons, and as the minute walls fades away, once more it is my pleasure not only to welcome our many listeners throughout the world, but also to welcome the four highly talented and humorous performers who this week are going to play Just a Minute. It is with tremendous pleasure that we welcome back one of this country's finest comedians, that is Paul Merton. We welcome back a humorous limerous, uh, lyricist, I should say, and also another fine comedy performer, Kit Hesketh Harvey. We welcome also back after long absence that charming and clever comedian, Linda Smith. And we welcome also someone who's never played the game before. So he's shaky at the present moment, but he is a talented comedy performer. That is Chris Neal. Would you please welcome all four of them? Thank you. Beside me sits Janet Staplehurst, who's going to help me keep the score, and she will blow a whistle when the 60 seconds are up. And this particular edition of Just a Minute is coming from the recently refurbished Theatre Royal in the Cathedral City of Winchester. And we have... Yes. <laughs> and you can hear that we have a fine, warm, receptive Hampshire audience ready to cheer us on our way <laughs> as we begin the show this week with Paul Merton. And Paul, the subject is Poetic License. Tell us something about that in this game, starting now. The early 19th century is often considered the golden age of poetry. There were so many poets around at the time, they had to be licensed by the government. Coleridge himself was only allowed four stanzas a month, <laughs> whereas Wordsworth was lucky if he was permitted to dash off the odd limerick between August and October. It is the most extraordinary concept now, and people won't believe you if you tell them that there was a time when poetry was considered so enriching... Uh, Chris Neal is challenged. I didn't know that. I think it's rather reckless of me first time. <laughs> <laughs> Was there a hesitation? There was a hesitation, Chris. Hesitation. Yes, you're quite right. You, you, you just shouldn't have hesitated in your first challenge. You're in well, there. Well, no, I wish I hadn't. I have got anything to say. Right. So. <laughs> well, you've got your first point in just a minute. You've got the subject. It's poetic license. There are 29 seconds available, and you start now. Uh, I think... Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Yes, Paul? I don't know. I feel bad about this, really. <laughs> We did start with her. We did, we did start with her. I think on this occasion, as it is the very first time he's no, ever I don't played. Mind. No, no, no. <laughs> it's the first time you've ever actually spoken on Just a Minute, so we do allow a newcomer one er uh, right at the beginning. But from now on, yes, there's no mercy. Have to... Right. I'm gonna be angry, so, I so we won't charge any points on that and All say right. that you have 28 seconds now on poetic license starting now. To call Ainsley out oh. <laughs> <laughs> Linda. A bit of uh, deviation. Yes, uh, well, yeah. he, well, deviation well, uh, from English, yes. But, yes. But, um, in, uh, <laughs> but normally we allow people who've never played the programme for <laughs> a at bit least of half a dozen chances to get a sentence out. <laughs> I know. Well, what we'll have to do is give Paul a bonus uh, point because it was a correct challenge. Yes, that's right. You're, you're right, Paul. Yeah, yes. all right. I'm happy uh, now. Yes, you're happy now, yes. <laughs> he gets a point because of a correct challenge. Uh, and uh, Linda's gets a point for a correct challenge. And she now takes the subject with 26 seconds, poetic license, starting now. I think that it's unfair that you should have to have a poetic license if you don't actually use poetry. I was dismayed to open the door the other night to a poetic license detector van <laughs> who said... Have you got a poetic license? I said, well, I don't really use the substance you refer to. Uh, kit challenge. I'm sorry, so use twice, didn't we, there? Oh. oh, sorry, was that unsporting? Oh. oh yeah. Kit, you've depressed them all now. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> Isn't it funny that you get a correct challenge, which is a clever one, and they are depressed. Um, they're resentful. They get. They get. They do take sides. Uh, um, they do. It's, yes. it's bitter. It's You'll bitter. But take heart, Kit. They turn. They turn. <laughs> they can be very fickle. A just a minute audience. Uh, Kit, you've got a correct challenge, so a point for that. And you have eight seconds on poetic license, starting now. I believe that every time the poet laureate passes a motion, as it were, he has to <laughs> forfeit his hogshead of Malmsey or his. <laughs> Whoever is speaking when the whistle goes gains an extra point. On this occasion, it was Kit Hesketh Harvey, and uh, you won't be surprised to discover that he's in the lead at the end of the round. They've all got one point, Kit's got two. 
So we carry on. Uh, Chris, Neil, mm. would you take the next round? Yes. Right. You said, mm, as if you shut your lips and we're going to speak again. I'm sorry. Uh, the subject is dating agencies. Chris, can you tell us something about those in just a minute, starting now? We are told these days that dating agencies are not just for the sad and lonely in our society, but to be honest, it does help. <laughs> I was invited many years ago when I'd been unceremoniously dumped to join a dating agency, and I looked around and I thought, oh, the one I really like, what am I keen on in life? And it's food. So I thought, one, where you're set up for dinner with somebody else of a similar bent, and you go out and enjoy each other's company and die. <laughs> Uh, Linda Challenge. I'm um, sorry, it does seem like shooting baby seals, I must admit, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> there were several ands. Yeah, there were four oh, or yes. five ands, yes. I'm afraid, yes. I was I mean, hoping that wouldn't be included, the word Well, well they, they're often generous and well, get one... it isn't normally, but when you haven't played the game before... All right. <laughs> You see, they often let one or two ants yeah. go, but half a dozen is yeah. uh, getting stretching a bit. So you've got the subject, uh, Linda. You have another point, of course, for a correct challenge. 30 seconds are available. Dating agencies starting now. Dating agencies. The phrase that I find a little alarming on a dating agency advert are when... Uh, Chris Challenge. Was that a slight sort of deviation on the word no. agency? No, no. She was putting her <laughs> posture <laughs> She was trying to get an apostrophe onto agencies, and it sounds a bit like that, and I thought she did rather well, actually. No, I did like it. I... <laughs> <laughs> but, but, no, no, a bit too keen, I think, okay. there, Chris. Yes. yes, very keen, first uh, time out. Yes. <laughs> so, an incorrect challenge, another point to Linda, 24 seconds, dating agencies, starting now. The initials G-S-O-H. Possibly they mean good sense of humour, but I suspect they mean going slowly off head, which isn't that reassuring if you're going to meet some with a view to friendship, possibly romance, possibly the idea uh, that you just Paul said Chappell. possibly about 20 times. Two possibilities, <laughs> Paul. So you've got in and you're going to tell us something about dating agencies and there are 10 seconds available starting now. I remember many years ago I was travelling on a tube and I looked up and saw this advert in front of me and said, are you sitting next to the new love in your life? And I turned around and there was this Chinaman smoking a cigar. <laughs> we lived together for about four or five years, but it didn't really work out. So, Paul Merton was speaking as a whistle when gained an extra point. He's now equal with Linda Smith in the lead, just ahead of Kit Kesseth Harvey and Chris Neal. And Linda, your turn to begin. The subject is multitasking. Can you tell us something about multitasking? <laughs> 60 seconds ago, starting now. Multitasking is the term used to describe the ability to perform several tasks at the same time. I am very adept at multitasking. For example, I can watch telly whilst drinking a cup of tea <laughs> at the same time, if only I smoked. Uh, Chris Challenge. I don't know why I'm being so keen. Um, <laughs> was that a repetition of same time? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, like, I like to challenge the chairman, actually. Well, yes, yes. Deviation, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, well, listen, Chris. Yeah. That's right, yes, same time. Keep can happy, I don't mind that. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. 44 seconds, you tell us something about multitasking, starting now. I was at a dinner party last week with a doctor who works in a North London hospital, and he was telling me about various elements of his job, and one thing, really, he doubles up as a lost property officer. <laughs> you would not believe the things people lose inside their bodies. <laughs> I can't speak. <laughs> Linda, you got in first. Yeah, I, I, I wish I hadn't really, because I was intrigued to know how that was going to end up. But, yes. um... So hesitation, 23 seconds, Linda, multitasking starting now. Another multitasking gift I have is to listen to Moneybox Live and slip into a light coma at the same time. <laughs> An ability that I believe I probably share with the vast majority of other uh, listeners. <laughs> Oh, sadly, a slip on majority. Ma yes, right, yes. Majority. Uh, majority is not a word that we understand, and so oh, right. we think it's a deviation from English as we understand it. Um, One day you may, Nicholas. Right. Paul, you have nine seconds once again. Well, it was ten before, it's nine this time. Multitasking, starting now. I remember I was sitting on the tube and I suddenly saw this sign opposite. Uh, <laughs> Challenged. He's still sitting on the tube. I know, but that was a different was round. Was a different one? I'm sorry. sorry. Carry on. It's a circle. You line, can, you can, you can. 
you can recycle thoughts, material and so forth, from one round to another, but uh, you can't in the same round. So, incorrect challenge, Paul, <laughs> another point seven seconds, multitasking, starting now. One of the great things that I love to do in life is performing on just a minute while consequently and also at the same time crushing grapes in a plastic <laughs> Uh, so Paul Merton speaking as a whistle when gained that extra point and with others in the round he is now just ahead of Linda Smith and uh, Kit Hesketh Harvey it's your turn to begin the subject is Pride and Prejudice tell us something about that in this game starting now it was written by somebody who came from Hampshire actually Jane Austen and the story goes thus it's five girls living in a house which has been entailed to a boring clergyman until Elizabeth meets Mr. Fitzwilliam Darcy who leaves William and goes off with her and they <laughs> rapidly <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna this is a very long book isn't it <laughs> It's very long. It's taken a devious turn already, I think. <laughs> it's not the well, book... It was a hesitation. Yeah, it was a hesitation, because he realised he'd deviated from what Jane Austen had written. <laughs> uh, right, so, Paul, a correct challenge. Pride and Prejudice, 41 seconds, starting now. It's one of those books that I've never read, but I often watch the television adaptations. There's been a many versions over the years. Who can forget the one with Charles Hawtrey, Will Hay... <laughs> <laughs> Hesitation, but it was very funny. <laughs> no, he didn't hesitate. <laughs> he could have had him something else, but I won't say it now. But no, 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 he didn't actually okay. hesitate. Okay. He kept going. No, no, fine. Um, I mean, it, uh, through the laughter, yes. <laughs> 29 seconds, still with you, Paul, on Pride and Prejudice, starting now. I breed poodles for a living, and <laughs> though my favourite animals are Pride and Prejudice, I've named them after the Jane Austen novel because they are beautiful creatures. I go out into the morning, I shout through my window, Pride! Prejudice and those little faces come running up towards me, followed by their bodies some way behind, as they lap at the back door, eager for their dog food. And I say to them, Ah, oh, my charming creatures, I. Uh, uh, challenged. Two creatures. Yes. No. no. Dogs. There were dogs first, not creatures. No. There were dogs no. first time. No. What was that? Yeah. Linda thinks there were two creatures. Right. What does the audience think? Were they more than. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. There we are. <laughs> I'm surprised anybody was listening, to be honest. <laughs> so, Kit, you've got in with creatures and three seconds on oh. Pride and Prejudice starting now. <laughs> Till uh, she sees him in uh, wet. Poor child. <laughs> well, there was a bit of a hesitation <laughs> there. <laughs> A good laugh, but uh, no, no hesitation. Two and a half seconds on Pride and Prejudice Kit, starting now. In wet trousers and admires his magnificent seat. <laughs> So, Kit Hesketh Harvey is moving forward there. He's now in second place behind Paul Merton. Linda Smith's one point behind him, and Chris Neal's two points behind them. And Paul, back with you to begin. The subject is what your name says about you. <laughs> Moment to think about that one. It's slightly involved. So, talk on it for 60 seconds if you can, starting now. Well, it can say a great many things. It can place you in time, class, age, sex, for example. Albert, as a name, is no longer popular, but it was at the turn of the last century. Nicholas Parsons' real name is Gladys Parsons. <laughs> and what a wonderful creature he is once he gets home, takes off this makeup that we see, and puts on a big sparkly dress. <laughs> For many years, he's been wandering around the streets of London. Hello, dear, we want to be naughty with a little girl. <laughs> a fair amount of crust because unfortunately the beeb beeb c does not pay <laughs> Kit challenged repetition of beeb no, i said b no, beeb c no he said oh, very clever yeah. he said oh, beeb, i'm sorry beeb, well done no. No. i mean actually I've, <laughs> after what he said i'd be very happy to give it away but um, <laughs> but he didn't actually no he very clever said beeb beeb c b beeb c yeah, yeah. <laughs> i just want to ask yes. um, just because i'm new to this mm -hmm. um <laughs> But does it matter that the BBC isn't anything oh. as such? Deviation. From... So is that a deviation? It's a bit late now, isn't it? No, no, no. <laughs> just, just it's quite cold in here and my mind's working slowly. Mm. Um, <laughs> yes, if you challenge for, for deviation, I would have given it. Oh, right, okay. But it's too late now. Okay, no, no, no. no it's slightly right, yes. retrospective, I know. Um, no, don't, no, but you were clearing up an interesting point. Thanks. And, uh, <laughs> with the audience... <laughs> Allow the audience into a slight sense of shock or coma, I don't know which, but 
Uh, so, Paul, it's still with you on what your name says about you starting now. Kit Hesiv Harvey could be the halfback line of West Ham United, <laughs> or it could be the name of the gentleman sitting next to me. By those very words, we conjure up perhaps a man who didn't go to a comprehensive school. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. We can't all have the right start in life, but somehow he struggled to make it all the way to hear Winchester to play just a minute. <laughs> So Paul Merton started with the subject and finished with it uh, uh, in spite of being interrupted at one particular point. And um, again, an extra point, of course, speaking as the whistle went, he's got a stronger lead. Why nobody challenged him for deviation when he talked about me being Gladys Parsons on the streets? I don't know. How but, could we? How, how could we? Uh, oh, you believe it? Yes, yes oh, my goodness. <laughs> there were people out in the audience just no nodding to each other. So. <laughs> Right, so we move on. Chris, Neil, your turn to begin. The subject is sulking. Tell us something about that boring subject in this game, starting now. To be honest, Nicholas, I'm quite upset that I have been given that subject. It is not in my emotional range or repertoire to be a sulker. And in fact, I'm so upset, I might not speak for the rest of the minute. <laughs> Good challenge. Too upset, I'm afraid. Too upset. Now that shows how much I am. <laughs> Right, so Kit, you've got a point and you've got 48 seconds. You've got the subject of sulking starting now. The big sulker at the moment is Peter Mandelson, who's sitting there like Achilles in his tent, refusing to come out, and all because Blair said to him, I don't want you anymore. Mandy, you came and you gave without taking, but I sent you away when you kissed me and stopped me from taking. So he's sitting in Hartley Pool and saying, the bitch is back and the lady's not for turning on television in the middle of the night and frightening us all. <laughs> Linda Challenge. Uh, hesitation. It was a hesitation. He got it off his chest, and that was it. <laughs> right, so Linda, you've got the subject of sulking. You have 27 seconds, starting now. Sulking is something many of us do, particularly when we're teenagers. You've got a lot to sulk about. Suddenly you put on a lot of weight, all of it on your lower lip, it seems. You just walk around pouting the whole time. And you manage to put about five syllables into the word no if anyone asks you a question. You sort of go, I won't say it because that would then be repetition and I'm not falling into that trap. Oh no. <laughs> Oh no, Kit, you challenge first. Uh, Repetition of no. I'm no, afraid. yes, yes. It's a tough <laughs> game, isn't it? But isn't it fun? Kit, you've got in cleverly with two seconds to go on sulking, starting now. Paul Merton, Aid Edmonton, Victoria Wood Green. <laughs> So Kit Hesketh Harvey got the point for speaking as the whistle went and his move forward. He's two points behind our leader, Paul Merton, and he's three Quiet. points ahead of Linda Smith, and he's four or five points ahead of Chris Neal. And Kit Hesketh Harvey, your turn to begin. The subject is makeovers. <laughs> Tell us something about that subject in this game, starting now. Somebody who's had a marvellous makeover recently mm. is the Shadow Home Secretary. She used to be so like the back end of a horse, didn't she? But now she's <laughs> Widdicombe Fair mm. with her lustrous peroxide teaseled glocks and... <laughs> <laughs> yes, Linda, you challenge first. Saying he just choked on his own lies. <laughs> <And then that. laughs> so we call that hesitation. Linda, you have makeovers. You have 47 seconds starting now. Makeovers are a modern scourge to my way of thinking. I'm utterly sick of them on the television all the time. I bet somewhere in a cave in Afghanistan, one of Bin Laden's many wives is nagging him, saying, never mind international terror, when are you going to get that back bedroom in the cave made over? It's just... Re <laughs> Poor challenge. Repetition of cave. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Mm. Yes. Mm. Yes, well, well, listen. 28 seconds for you, Paul, on makeovers starting now. I remember seeing the first makeover about 15 years ago on television. I thought that was fairly dull. I don't suppose I'll ever see that again. And sure enough, they've been doing it ever since. It's the most amazingly dull thing. They get somebody... Uh, Linda Challenge. Too dull. Too dull, I'm yeah. afraid, yes. 17 seconds, Linda. Makeover starting now. They always get in that big ponce from changing rooms. The one who looks like Margaret Lockwood in The Wicked Lady. And they... Uh, Chris challenged. Was that a hesitation? It was a hesitation, Chris. Yes, she was... She... That was 
you're such a fickle audience. I don't know whether you're clapping Linda's last remark, which is very funny, or Chris, the fact he's got in. So, Chris, you've got makeovers in seven seconds, starting now. I cannot think of anything finer than being given a voucher to go into a top London West End department store, have a lady clamber over me. <laughs> So Chris Neal gained points in that round, including one for speaking as a whistle went, and he has leapt forward, and he's still in fourth place, but, um, <laughs> but no, he's not very far behind Kit Hith, his hobby. He's a few points behind Linda Smith, and even more behind Paul Merton, who's still in the lead, and Chris, it's your turn to begin, and the subject is Keats. Tell us something about Keats in just a minute, starting now. I know why I've been asked this. It's because Keats was inspired to write his lovely Ode to Autumn. I've forgotten the words. Uh, when he was... Oh, I've hesitated. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell them! <laughs> Keep going. They might let you ignore it. I certainly would ignore it. Strike. It's a free empty strike. It's a free strike. Unfortunately, you hesitated. We know that. Everybody did. And, um, <laughs> uh, Linda, you've got in first... And the well, I think it's, it's what he wanted, really. <laughs> it was a cry for help, really. <laughs> yes. 45 seconds, Keats, starting now. The railway station sometimes put up Po-Poems by Miss <laughs> Ah, Kid challenged. Oh, Po-Poems. Po-Poems, yes. yes. A deviation from English and probably... Were well, they uh, like little dried poems? <laughs> <laughs> They sound like lavatorial poems to me. The, um, uh, anyway, you've got in K uh, Kit with 45 se seconds on Keats starting now. He was, along with Coleridge and Shelley and Wordsworth and Byron, one of the new romantics like Simon Le Bon and Adam Ant. <laughs> and he wrote all sorts uh, of... Paul Challenge. Well, there was quite a lot of bands. There were quite a lot of bands, I'm afraid, yes. yes. So, Paul, you've got in 36 <laughs> seconds. Keats starting now. I don't know anything about him. <laughs> Yes, he's, it's deviation. he's learnt a lot at this programme already, hasn't he? Oh, what a clever challenge. Yeah. Mm. You'd have had him for hesitation, but you have him for that as well. Also, <laughs> But only one point, I'm afraid. Oh, right. 35 <laughs> seconds, Keats, starting now. His death was very uncertain. They weren't quite sure whether it was too... Uh, Paul... <laughs> well, is he dead or not? <laughs> I mean, if he isn't, it's a scandal, because they buried the poor devil. <laughs> So, what is your challenge within the rules well, of justice? I want to know. <laughs> I have admitted I know nothing about Keats. I don't know if he's alive or dead. <laughs> Deviation. Deviation. Um, no, I think he was using it grammatically. His death was a little uncertain. Uh, I think it means the circumstances of his death. <laughs> So well, that sort of thing could confuse a stupid person. No, no. Paul, <laughs> uh, well, what I will do, to be fair and generous, they loved your interruption, so we give you a bonus point for that. But uh, Kit gets a point because it was an incorrect challenge, and he continues on Keats with 32 seconds starting now. Whether it was going to be consumption or not, TB or not TB, that is the question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Paul, you... This time you have got in, Paul. Repetition of TB. <laughs> How on earth did you spot it? The uh, 28 seconds, Paul, on Keats starting now. Well, one of the controversial aspects of Keats' life is whether it's ended or not. People aren't so sure. They know he was born in 1774, but is he still actually breathing and walking around? Some people say he's got a hot dog stand outside Stamford Bridge, and you go there, Chelsea home games on a Saturday, and there he is selling these horrible bits of meat stuck in a bap saying, oh, I'm Keats, I used to write poems, you know. And people are amazed at the... <laughs> Kid challenge. Uh, lots of people in all that. There were lots of people in all that, yes. yes. Yeah. Oh, it was right. a flood. It was, it was a great, great wing great of lyric, idea, yes. lyric Everyone was terrified to challenge you for, for deviation, but, uh, but you got in cleverly with three seconds oh, ago. Oh, have I? Oh, yes. great. On a repetition of Keats starting... Not a repetition of Keats, on repetition. The subject is Keats starting now. La belle dame sans merci, the bloody woman um, never says thank you. Paul challenge, was it? <laughs> I don't know what he's saying. <laughs> For a man who doesn't English. know what he's saying, and then you, with great confidence, said when Keats was born in 1774... I've made that up. I know you did, but nobody challenged you, did no, they? No, because they didn't know either. <laughs> <laughs> they thought, it sounds right, oh, might yeah. have been. That's, that's the great bluff of just a minute. So what was your challenge this time? I can't remember. No, can I? <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, Kit, another point, two seconds. <laughs> Kit, starting now. Loving Fanny as he did, which is extraordinary when you look at his portrait. <laughs> 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 so
So Kit has with Harvey gaining a number of points in that round, including one for speaking as the whistle went. So we're moving into the last round, uh, sad to say, and it is uh, Linda's turn to begin. Linda, the subject now is my second language. Tell us something about that in this game starting now. My second language is non-existent because, like most English people, I know that if I speak loudly and clearly and fix Johnny Foreigner with an authoritative gaze, he'll understand all right. And if he doesn't, well, I think he's probably bluffing. Uh, uh, Chris Challenge. Well, there were a lot of he's. There were. Yes, a lot of he's. Well, listen, Chris, so you got in on 45 seconds to go uh, on my second language starting now. My second language is that of romance. I have often been compared to Beppe from EastEnders. <laughs> it's, it's what with me, um, me Mediterranean look and me growly voice, I was going to say, but... Um... <laughs> <laughs> I've got to say, Chris, the trouble is you come up with these bombers and the, you, you love them so much yourself that <laughs> you dry yourself up. I know. And you can't keep going. I know. It's you mustn't meant... be such a good audience for your own jokes. <laughs> For Linda challenge first, and you've got in under the hesitation. My second language is back with you, Linda. 32 seconds to go, starting now. My second language would probably have come along a lot better if I didn't go to such a rubbish school, the Quick Fit Comprehensive, in <laughs> South East London, where our French teacher was a bit of a dozy old bat, to be frank, who would just make us colour in endless maps of France and little pictures of French markets. <laughs> Uh, Kit challenged. French, twice. Mm -hmm. yeah. French I said France and French. No, she said French. 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 No, a French teacher French. in French, French market. French teacher you have. Right. Um, Kit, correct challenge. My second language, 12 seconds, starting now. I happen to be completely bilingual, not in a public school sense, as Paul Merton would have it, but gifted with tongues. And I would like now to tell you a joke, which is of the knock, repeat that word, variety. It is the <laughs> French... <laughs> So, as I said, that was to be the last subject. We have no more time to play this delightful game. And uh, just to let you know the final situation, Chris Neal finished up in fourth place, but only just just marginally behind Linda Smith, who was in third place. But out in the lead, together equal, which seems a very fair situation, we have Kit Hesketh Harvey and Paul Merton, our joint winners. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we do hope you've enjoyed this edition of Just a Minute, and it's my thanks to our wonderful players of the game, Paul Merton, Kit Hesketh, Harvey, Linda Smith, and Chris Neal, and uh, I thank Janet Staplehurst for helping me with the score and blowing her whistle so beautifully and elegantly. We are indebted to Ian Messiter, who created the game that we enjoy playing, and also we thank our producer, Claire Jones, for keeping us in order as best she can and making sure it all goes out so smoothly. And we are very, very indebted to this delightful, very lovely... <laughs> exciting, sexy audience here <laughs> in the Theatre Royal of Winchester. From our audience, from our panel, from Nicholas Parsons, goodbye. Until we next time, we play Just a Minute. <laughs>